again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another television conversation. Today, my guest is Tom Hill. Now, that's a name that everybody in this city has known for years and years, a fixture on Broadway uh, Revere, the Herbert Hill Insurance, and, and um, been there for how long, Tom? How long have you well, been there? Well, since 1918, my father was wow. on Broadway. I've been on Broadway since 1938. I've 75 years on Broadway myself. I was an auto boy starting at the first national stores, which were located on the corner of Broadway and uh, Winthrop Avenue. And then there was a, uh, another branch of it at 331 Broadway, which was next to the Revere Journal, and that was a smaller version. And Mr. Thomas ran that. Mr. Foley ran the the big market on uh, 349. Later on, they uh, had the supermarket at 372 Broadway, which is, is part of the Revere Health Clinic uh -huh. there today. Okay. Uh, the First National stores at that time and at different times had five stores in the city. Broadway yeah. Yeah. was a city at uh, an area at one time from Pleasant Street to Winter Avenue there was a, a group of markets. You had going from Pleasant Street to Winter Avenue, you had uh, uh, a... Um, well, you had A&P's on the there, A &P didn't was you? I remember across the street by the Sovereign Bank. Yes. And you had Sam Aaron's Market that was in between Peone's store and the, uh, 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 let's see, uh, uh, Peonies was on about where Papa John's is now? No, a little bit further down. A little down. bit further down? Further right. down where the hairdressers are. Uh, okay, we used and to that, go there uh, after school and yeah, hang out and, and that, have that. Uh, well, you know, I remember a, a First National, I, uh, maybe it was an A&P, right where Walgreens is now. Was no, that? That, uh, that was the Carbons where Walgreens is now. And, and that, that was the... Um, the uh, narrow, uh, the um, the the buses uh, there was came a, in there? Well, there was the streetcars there, right? And then the uh, the uh, Lynn uh, Lynn uh, the railroad railroad yeah? Yeah. yeah, and then it was taken over by the Boston elevators. City Yards was right uh, next door to where the um, Bank North is. Well, then, you know, yeah. maybe maybe we should start at one end of Broadway and move back because okay. you've been right in the middle and you have seen yeah. it all from both sides. Now, for example, we're here in the uh, Citizens Bank building, right? And we're here, but I know this wasn't a bank and it wasn't this big it a building. Used to be Sell Sellers Department Store. Ah, right. It also was Almond Jewelry. Yes. And it was Philadora's Pharmacy. Right. Then the you had a setback building there. That was Batstone's Plumbing. Uh -huh. Then you had Daniel's Undertaking Parlor next door. Oh, right down here. Right, it's right next door where the uh, Tommy Caparelli had his uh, beauty shop. That's right. So. And uh, then you had next door you had Pisano's Market. You had five brothers that ran a meat market. Then you have uh, Orcella Court, which was is a, uh, a court or street now. The Arcella brothers were uh, shoemakers that had the next building. Oh, really? And so the, just so people will know, that's right beside right your be, store. Right be, well, not your store, but right beside your building there, right. your office, right. is the court. And you can go back in there to park. Now, right. were there buildings back there with the parking lot? It's a two-family house right behind uh -huh. the uh, Arcella's uh, shoemaking thing. Uh. Then you had the, um, it was... Um, uh, well, let's he go was down. A photographer. Oh, let's go down to Casasa Overpass because okay. you were telling me what used to be there before they built that overpass. High school. That was a high. That was a park, and the high school, Revere High School, was a practice field for their football team. And Andy Casasa was a state senator. He became mayor, oh. and he was mayor for six years during the depression. If you're coming from the Chelsea line, traffic used to be backed up in a Everett on a hot day in the summer, and that the uh, 
the overpass was a necessity right. that they needed because of the traffic problem. Oh, right. So that they, they got state funds and they built the overpass and named after Andy Casasa, uh -huh. who was the mayor and a, and a former senator. So before that, you just came from a small street. It was just, you came down Broadway, Chelsea to Broadway Chelsea Revere, and, and, and then you went across on. toward the beach, is right. That right before the overpass. Okay. Well, you had the, the, the cross in there coming from on the Revere Beach Parkway that Right. Went it to the beach down by. Oh, Slate's that was still Mill. oh, but it wasn't. It was not an overpass, right? But Broadway right. was a continuation uh -huh. coming from Chelsea right. to. Well, at some point, you told me that Broadway was really only Broadway way down. That well, had... that's according to a, an 1874 map. It shows that the uh, the horse and buggy railroad from Lynn to Salem ran what is now Broadway. Yeah to Malden Street. Oh. Malden Street, you picked up Broadway to the Lynn Marsh Road. Uh -huh. The the horse and buggy trolley was like the cable car in San Francisco. It huh. came three three sections to the to the cable car and you, you got on was pulled by a horse and you got on and you had two conductors, one in the rear and he dinged it, and the guy in the front was the conductor, and he uh, ran the cable car over the marsh. That's a true story because my father-in-law worked on it when he was a young man, and he told me about it. Uh, and your father-in-law's so, name was? George Hannigan. George Hannigan, okay. And, so uh, lots of Hannigans around. So yeah, the, the Hannigan family was here long before the hills. Right. So, and that, uh, so anyway. When, so when... They were there, and you said something about, you know, where the Dublin is. It's now Volare's. That, the Dublin was a hay and grain store that they sold hay and grain for the horses and that. Huh. Park Avenue wasn't named at that time. Park Avenue, according to the map, was a farm that ran to the Woodlawn Cemetery. One big farm all that way? That was a one-piece one farm. And the one part of the thing on the left hand side of the street were homes and the rest was farming. Huh. It it was uh, in 1904 I believe the city of uh, the town of Revere purchased it from one of the years that that uh, from the family that uh, was uh, came from originally from Cambridge uh -huh. and that the uh, the town of Revere purchased it and then turned it over to the park, uh, the town park department, and that the um, the area that the the parks covered was from Alston Street to the Broadway area, which was the horse and buggy area. Yeah. They took part of it for the hay and grain store, and right next to it was Marcus Lumber, and right next yes. to it was an open area. <clears throat> that later became Hill Park, but it was used for the as a training ground for the uh, fire department, and that the uh, tennis courts uh, extended beyond that, and then there was the uh, Paul Revere Park. Paul Revere Stadium. And that uh, right ah uh -huh. so now I remember a variety of places coming down from uh, coming down from Kansas Overpass. Um, of course, I remember the theater that was there because... Well, that didn't come, the, the when theater did the didn't theater come, come? till the 1930s, the mid-30s. Uh, Broadway, coming from the Casasa overpass, first you had the parkway and you had a garage on the corner. Then you had, uh, going to the corner of Tass Street, the next street over, right. you had a grocery store that was the uh, uh, Demos, uh, Mazo, uh, uh, Mosesian family, two brothers, Sam and Charlie. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then you had on the corner Married was a vacant the lot. Family. Mm -hmm. And then you had Terry's Diner, and uh, oh, it was on the corner of Vinyl Street, and one house uh, that Dr. Uh, Longo's family built right behind the uh, diner. You <clears> then you had a billboard, and yeah. then you had Parati's Garage, a gas station, and 
our uh, variety store, which was uh, later become a phase. Now you said, okay, so you said there were five um, first nationals and on Broadway. On Broadway, and no, three. Oh, uh, three on Broadway, nationals, five in the city. Five in the city. Yeah. Uh, one in Beachmont that I remember. Right. Um, and then A&P was, A was also in Beachmont, yeah. one on one side, one yeah. on the other, um, and A&P on there. Now, you also said that there were five, how many car dealerships were there on Broadway? There was Broadway? four on Broadway and one on the Parkway. You had Parades on Broadway, which there was is, a Nash dealer. Uh -huh. And yet across the street you had Waz, which was right. Chrysler of Plymouth. So Parades and Waz were right. across. Mm -hmm. Then you had Benny uh, Abrams here, which was Crescent Motor Sales, which was where the uh, Bank North is. Uh -huh. And then you had the... Uh, uh, um, that was right there. So we, so we had another Mercury. Don Early's, there. which was the Mercury's uh, opposite. Uh, the, that was four. Uh huh. Then you had the Hudson dealer on Revere Beach Parkway, just beyond Slade's Mill. So, if you have, we had, so we had five of those in the city, and then mm -hmm. I think you said there was some phenomenal number of gas stations. On, there were seventeen on Broadway. on Broadway at one time. My goodness. That sold gas. Eighteen. Broadies didn't. Uh. You, you started out at the uh, at the overpass where you had opposite the the garage where Maggie Brown's had a Brody store on the Parkway. Next door was a gas station. Next door was a house, and then the next house to that was run by the Collins family. And one of the sons went to was a a, a priest, and he. He taught at Notre Dame, and he was still there 35, 40 years later. And then you had Page Street. Okay. Then you had a grocery store run by Milo Cataldo, which later became he was a, a Broadway cafe, and he was Stevie, uh, uh, Silvio Cella's father-in-law. Yeah. Wasn't he an elected official yes, somewhere? Yes, he was. I, I he was president of the Revere City Council yeah, he was for many a, years, and he right, was right. quite I, a guy, I real recall good guy. Jim McChrystal um, talking yeah. about him. Jim McChrystal, a, a city treasurer. <clears throat> so you had, um, it, it's funny because Broadway, I've seen it move from one to the other. When, when then we you had, had the Bon Ton Laundry, uh -huh. just beyond that where the, where the uh, reliable oil was. Bonton Laundry. Uh -huh. And next to that, you had the North Shore Dye House. The North Shore Dye what House took cleaning in all over the state and up to New Hampshire. And eventually they took in shoes. Oh. And then you had a, 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 a two family house, and then you had Waz Garage yeah. and oh. Fenno Street. Uh, so Fenno Street, years ago, they said was a farm, and Clude Page Street was also a farm. And they named those streets after the farmers. Uh-huh. Oh, I didn't realize that. And huh. Mabel Humphreys had a grocery store, on a uh, uh, restaurant on the corner. Frank Maffei bought it off her. He had a name P next door to it, a vacant uh, uh, well, lot. Where did the name Fenno's Corner come from? Fenno's Corner came from the Fenno's family. Just they were... Uh, a long-time family in the city, uh -huh. and they were from that area. And so they, but they did they own Fenno's Cafe there? No, or no, it was no. That, that, that was, was just was, named. That was a, a at one time I think it was a like a country store. Uh huh. And then there was a I don't know uh, it was a, a family that bought it, and then Joe Maffei bought it, and then came uh, the bar. I see. You had okay. prohibition and that. Came now, in 1933. The American Legion. You told me a story about how there was a house. Th how how it was a house. That was and the then police station. The old police station was a house that they eventually moved down to uh, Chiva Street. It's still there today, the house, uh -huh. and it was owned uh, by the. Uh, uh, I'll think of well, we'll take a minute. The family, another yeah. time, yeah. And we, the house is still there. Though. The house is still there. Yeah. So you said that the American Legion was founded that as a building, as as an American Legion after World War One. American Legion used to meet at 270 Broadway, up over the market. Okay. And there was an office there, and the Metropolitan Life 
came in there after. Is that opposite City Hall, 270? Opposite, right opposite the City Hall. Okay. And the uh, Legion was built in 1936. And they had fundraisers and they had beanos. They had a beano on Broadway, too. Oh. And that to raise the money. They built it for $44,000. Wow. And they lost it during the war, and they had a mortgage of $14,000 on it. Mayor Carey at the time said, we're going to buy it back for the American Legion. And he did. And he put an office in downstairs for the uh, city of Revere, uh -huh. which became the Committee of Veterans Affairs. Uh -huh. uh, the, uh, so I law, suppose they lost it because everybody was uh, fighting in World There was no World membership, and they had yeah. very little income and all that, even yeah. though the Beano's and all that. Right, yeah. And that, uh, anyway, they lost, and he bought it back. And he was very generous to the Legion. He let them keep the rentals. And he put a janitor in there to help him out yeah. and all that. Well, it's, they, it's a wonderful building. And it, it is certainly, a wonderful building. It was a great investment because, I mean, it, to see it go by the wayside would be awful. He it's also a, had the Legion cooperate with the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and the uh, Gold Star Mothers and the Legion uh, Auxiliaries. Yeah. They all had space in yeah, the building. Yeah. And they had the use of the building. Well, that's certainly also. true to this day. We have so many things there. That's true. And, of course, the, the He put the registry the in there at all. The registry was there at the right. time. Yeah. So, those are, yeah. so it's been a very good, it was a very good investment, too. And moving down, well, we, ca we have to well, come to City Hall. Well, then you had Rye's Drugstore. Where was Brian's Drugstore? Rye, W-R-Y, I think, Rye. Uh-huh. And the Palladino, Mr. Palladino worked for him. And when Rye retired... He sold it to the Palladinos, and he also took over the drugstore. He was a licensed, uh -huh. registered pharmacist. Well, there have been a variety. When I think of it, when I was a kid, there were three or four drugstores on oh, Broadway. Oh, they had six, I think, on drugstores. Yeah, so he had Nobles and at uh, Nigro's Drugstore uh, on the corner of Yeaman Street. Then they had uh, Palladinos, which became yeah. there. You had Tranfaglers on the corner of Park Avenue. You had Philodoras right downstairs right down below here. in this building. They uh, had Desimonis further up uh, in the corner right. of Revere Street. That's right, and, yeah. And, that, and, uh, uh, and there was a one right over by, um, right across the you street. Had one, uh, uh, yeah, had one, yeah, on some of the around Proctor right. Avenue. Seems, yeah, yeah right, right on the corner, yeah. or almost on the corner of Proctor right. Avenue. Right, right. And, and, that, they were, uh, and that didn't close until... You know, fairly recently. Well, it seems the, to the be. big, but of the course, big right, uh, Walgreens and them put yeah, them out of business. Yeah, they just put them out of business, yeah. right? I remember there were two in the corners in Beachmont, and now one's a you know a, little, a small variety store and a bakery, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, they couldn't compete. So, City Hall, um, when you, when uh, when you first started your business, um, who was mayor? Uh, we try to get a little perspective about who was Well, I, I can go back to remember? remembering, but I don't know at the time. But I can remember when Casasa was running for mayor, he ran against Charlie White. Charlie White came from North Revere, and he was in the council. Another uh, time that he ran for mayor, and he also won, was uh, uh, Billy Gallagher. Billy Gallagher came from Ward 2. He was also a councilman. And that uh, uh, then you came after him, you had uh, uh, Jimmy O'Brien. Jimmy O'Brien beat him uh, for mayor, and Jimmy O'Brien was mayor for four years. Uh -huh. And then after Jimmy O'Brien, you had... Uh, 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 was that when Freddie Reinstein was mayor? No, no, no. Freddie was... Uh, 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 plan B. Well, he was a Plan B. That's right. Freddie Reinstein right. was a state representative. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, but uh, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to think of uh, uh, Larry Gillis. Larry Gillis. And you had Carey. And after Carey, you had uh, Peter Jordan. And then uh, George after, after uh, uh, Peter Jordan, you had uh, uh, Plan B, uh, Plan E. Right, plenty. And that's plenty, uh -huh. and then they, they went from the uh, the uh, mere form of government to the. Uh, uh,
Right. To manage the, a form to the management, of government. Right. And we and had a city manager. And then we went back to it at a later date. Uh, right. And, and that. And, uh, yeah, that was interesting about how that moved back and forth. But I can remember people saying that they felt that a city manager would be uh, more professional. As it turned out, it didn't work out well, so well. People for got sick of that right, type of government. Right. government because they wanted somebody who would be responsible. That's to true. Them. Yeah. You want a man who will be responsive. They, 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 they to could your remove. Needs. They didn't That's have to right. wait till the chairman. <laughs> right. So. so. Um, then moving on, just for a minute about down at the end of the city, you, you said that the GE was thinking about coming here they at one time. They were going to come. They said the GE uh, was started by, by a lot of local people. Oh. I worked for the GE, and the local people, I meant Saugus, Nahant, or uh, uh, Swampscott in that area. That's what the uh, union said. Uh, I worked for the GE for a year and a half. They were known as the Thompson Electric. Oh. And I worked with a woman who worked for the Thompson Electric, and her pay was five cents an hour. Oh. When I worked for the GE, my wife got me the job. She worked for the GE. I went from the, from the supermarket of the first national stores to them. It was 40 cents an hour, <laughs> minimum wage. And that when you got now, a raise... what year was that? That was 1941. 41, 40 cents an hour minimum and, uh, wage. Well, the minimum wage was 25 cents an hour under uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt from 1936 on. And, that and when I worked uh, for the First National, worked 41 and a half hours a week at $13. And wow. that uh, my pay went from 25 to 27 cents an hour to 31 cents an hour to 33 to 36 cents an hour. And then uh, I, got, I had no benefits. You had to work 44 hours a week. I worked 41 benefits. and a half hours. Oh. But I would put in 44 or whatever. Right, right. So but I didn't get, get paid for it. Yeah, right. And that, mm. uh, but anyway, it was the Thompson Electric, and that they uh, have a, a place in the Hampton, which is called the Thompson Club. I imagine named after them. And yeah, that, uh, right. I, I probably. And that, yeah. uh, Maybe we didn't have enough land at that time. Yeah. Well, that uh, would have been interesting. Well, yeah. Right. Well, they, the GE uh, wanted to come to Revere. Did you ever have occasion to take a plane out of the Revere Airport? No. That, that was uh, Julie Goldman ran the Revere Airport. The Revere Airport at the time was on International Highway. And it yes. didn't become Squire Road until about 1950. Then they changed the name to it. Huh. They changed it to J.P. Squires. Now, I, some said it was the, the meat man. I don't think so. I think J.P. Squires was a landowner, loaner up the heavy landowner, as well as Copeland Circle. He was a landowner. When you talk about Copeland Circle today, people know who was he. Yeah, he right. was a landowner. Right. Mm -hmm. You talk about Brown Circle, who was he? He was the city clerk of Revere for 30 years. And, and he, Butler Circle. Butler Circle, I think, was, so the was named World after. World War II vet? No, I think that it was named after, uh, I think he lived on Olive Street, and I think he was a, a, a bar owner. I don't know. Oh. And that uh, I think he was uh, with uh, Nate Siegel, a partner who was at the, uh, on the North Shore Road uh, Bar they had. Uh huh. Okay. I, I could be wrong yeah. on that. I'm well, not we'll find sure. out for next time because that'll be a question that pe people well, can call up the answer on. That's a, a maybe city one. clerk so might have that. I'm sure. Right, right. I know there were butlers who were killed in World War II. But, but then well, again, I had kids in school named Butler also, too. So, yeah. so uh, yeah, the buildings years ago, the police officers were all walking. And a, and a police officer would walk from the station down to uh, Broadway and the parkway. Well, where was the station? The station, I think at that time they had built it on Pleasant Street. Uh -huh. It had moved from, from where the Legion location is. Right. There. So. And that uh, there would be a red light. And the red light, would he'd, 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 he'd have a call box there right in front of the, the building on the parkway on Broadway. Uh -huh. And they would say, he'd have to ring the box, and the box would know he was. Then he would walk down the parkway to the end of Fennel Street, 
there'd be another one. And then he would get down Malden Street, there'd be another one, another box, he'd have to ring the box. Then he would come from down Malden Street to Broadway again and ring the box. And there'd be a light on top of the fire station here called the station. And they would. Uh -huh. and, they, and that's how they would keep track of the cops, where he was walking, and what his beat was. And so if he didn't ring, then I suppose they, they would he know was he, was in, uh, oh, he was in trouble. <laughs> and they better send somebody else yeah, to find that's out. True. Right, that's, that, that, that would be a yeah. problem. Of course, I remember the days when there were fire boxes around. Isn't fire there all the way. still some of those. Around. Well, the fire boxes, one was on the station, and they, they had key boxes. Like if you went down uh, uh, Broadway to the corner of Beach Street, that would be box 25. Uh-huh. Then you would have another call box at the corner of Mill Street and Beach Street. That would be 251. Then you would have Revere Beach Parkway at Mill Street. That would be 252. Oh. Then you would come back up Broadway to uh, uh, the parkway. That would be 253. There were key boxes. And so and, if... And the game old system... They were all above ground, went underground about 1947, 48. Uh -huh. And that they, that they, they were all the all, uh, all underground the wire system. Oh. Yeah. You mean the wires were overhead all, they were all, all the time overhead, before that? Yeah. Oh. oh. I so. think there was 130 or 139 call boxes in the city. So if somebody rang the call box? You would know where the they box was. They didn't know where to go, so they just head toward the box. Right. You know. Now, the fire department had a board with all these box numbers in there. Uh huh. And they would take out box 25, and they would punch it in and tap it in, and all the apparatus would move to box 25. They'd have running cards. Oh. Box 2, uh, box... Uh, 25 bucks, three and four, engine three and engine four and ladder one would respond. Right. And then uh, whatever it was. Then they had a mutual aid system with Chelsea, Malden, Everett and all that. And that was in the 90, 91, 92, 93. They would put it up at uh, A2, Chelsea, Malden, oh, I see. whatever right, it was right. and on, they would the, go. on the call uh, boxes. Wow. Well, I guess they developed lots of systems to, you know, respond to emergency. Quite a system emerge. and quite a yeah. cooperative basis, too. Yeah. And, and, and they and didn't take is, more than they could handle. Yeah. Though. Still is cooperative to this day. Yeah. I mean, still, you know, wonderfully cooperative to this day, right. too. Right. It's really great. Um, now, if we come down the, f and speaking of fire station, when was the fire station built? Do you know offhand? Well, the, the, the fire station originally here was on Park Avenue. Oh. And was built in about 1915, the, the headquarters. Uh-huh. And about 1907 or whatever it was. It was all over there. And they talked about when the horses used to come from North Revere, two white horses coming down Broadway on the pumpers. They used to have pumpers on both sides. And it was beautiful, and and, wow. that, uh, and the Avery Foley was a fireman. His grandfather, I think, was the man that was in charge up in North Revere. And they told the same story about when they used to have the horses down at Walden Street, how the horses would be at the back of the station, and when the the alarm would come in, that the two horses would run automatically right to the front where they'd hook them up and go out the station and answer the call. And when they used to move them out, they used to call them Haw 1 and Haw 2. And that's oh. how they would Haw 1 and Haw 2 and they would go. Oh, wow. So, so it was they were trained uh, specifically, they did, yeah. just like regular firefighting. Right. <laughs> regular firefighting. That's quite wow. a thing. And yeah. George Porter, when we were... When I was on the fire department, he used to educate us, and he used to make sure that we did, and he even uh, told us how to drink a cup of coffee and how to <laughs> answer this and everything else. And so you started out as a as a delivery boy for the first, first national, national stores, and, then and what I became else did you do? I became a clerk, and from a clerk I went to work for the GE. From the GE, I went in the army. From the army, I came back, and the GE was on strike. And that Carrie uh, 
Mick here, he, uh, he liked me, took a like to me, and that uh, I was walking by the station one day, and I was working, I was helping my father, and uh, I was walking by the station when I got home, he called up and he said, uh, his secretary told my mother, the mayor wants to see him. I went up to him and he said, what are you doing? I said, don't help my father waiting for the GE to settle. He said, look, take the fire department exam, and if you're finishing the first 20, I'll appoint you. And I didn't want to be a fireman, but I was embarrassed. It's okay. <laughs> he sent me down to talk to Captain McCauley. He told me to buy a, a red book. I bought a red book. I became a fireman. I finished ninth on the list. And then I spent uh, 16 years in the fire department. He also kept me working as a special cop for two and a half years. I worked in the election department. I worked in the election, uh, the uh, park department. I worked in the, um, where else, at, uh, yeah, parks. Oh, I worked for the public works there, digging the culvert. That your county ditch at uh, Hill Park. Wow. I did, yeah. <laughs> well, so 20 years. So with the you had lots of different experiences. Uh, I did, yeah. And and when did you sort of settle into um, into the insurance business? Well, I, I, I uh, got did hurt. Did you always help out your father? I, I got hurt at a, at a fire, yeah. and that uh, there wasn't a lot of money, and that uh, if I stayed on the fire department, I would have had a going to a fire alarm job and I, the fire alarm I, I had put in three months on that and it was you work today eight to four tomorrow was four to twelve and the following day was twelve to eight and you were off a day uh. and you couldn't adjust to your sleeping and your hours and to me it, it wasn't that so I took a retirement that and, uh, then you, then you and it that. wasn't much and that's yeah. uh, when uh, my father used to give away the insurance, and a fellow from East Boston said, you know, he, he said, you helped me when I uh, was learning the appraisal and, and the real estate business, and your father helped me, and he said, why don't you get an insurance license, which I did, and so I became an insurance man. Uh -huh. Well, we're, we're so, nearing the end of this segment of well, the show. And we're sort of near, near ending right by the fire department and by Hill Insurance. And I'm thinking about focusing on that area. We'll start out on that next time because next time I'd like to talk a little bit about your experiences in the war, your family's experience, and of course about the new school, the Sergeant James J. Hill School, uh, to be located right behind the fire department there, which will be another, I mean, a happy, sad um, occasion for you when that opens yeah. um bring back some sad memories but a wonderful honor and yeah. love to talk to you about it uh tom thank you so much for sharing these memories with us and um folks out there i know that you you've enjoyed it and uh we'll hope that you'll come back for the part two of a discussion with a conversation with tom hill thanks so much tom thank you thank you carol thank you very much <laughs>